you're watching San Diego's number one source for news. This is Local 8 News at 6.30. Hey, this was a, a near-perfect flight as far as I could see. From my point of view, it was a perfect flight. Yes, but it was a wild ride into space. Tonight, the team of Spaceship One is one step closer to making commercial space travel a reality. Mayor Dick Murphy announces his new plan to save the city money, freezing the salaries of city workers. And a school board meeting gets really heated when one member compares a decision to what happened to Jews in Nazi Germany. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Tuck. And I'm Kathleen Bay. There was a number of nail-biting moments today when the world's first privately manned rocket blasted off into space. Spaceship One, with pilot Michael Melville on board, lifted off at 7.12 this morning, our local time, from the Mojave Desert. Shortly after, the spacecraft began a series of unexpected rolls. But Melville was able to recover and reached an altitude of more than 60 miles above Earth. Jeff Zevely in the newsroom now with more on this historic flight. Jeff. Michael, an amazing ride. When the spacecraft rolled 24 times at nearly 3,000 miles per hour, the pilot was told to abort. But today, 10 million was on the line, so he held on. Approaching 90 knots now as quite night. Departs Earth. Attached to the underbelly of a specialized plane, Spaceship One takes off at dawn. Oh, it's very exciting, very exciting. Crowds camped out just to catch a glimpse of the historic flight. The plane carries the spacecraft to about 50,000 feet, and then watch what happens. The plane releases the spacecraft and lets the rocket engines take over. But then the unexpected, on the way to space, Spaceship One starts to roll. Did I plan the roll? Well, I, <laughs> I'd like to say I did, but I didn't. It was, uh, you know, you're extremely busy at that point. Your feet and your hands and your eyes and everything is working about as fast as you can work them. And uh, probably I stepped on something too quickly and caused the roll. But pilot Michael Melville straightened it out and soared on to 62 miles above Earth. Great engine, man. That engine would have gone 11 more seconds. How high would that have been? <laughs> That engine, which burns on rubber and laughing gas, was designed at Space Dev in Poway and may help these space travelers win the $10 million and Sorry X Prize. And the moment those wheels touch down, the two week clock begins to tick. One flight down, one more to go. Not only will they make history, they'll make a lot of money. From my point of view, it was a perfect flight. Since 1996, 26 teams have competed for the X Prize, but if Spaceship One can successfully launch again in the next two weeks, its team will win the top prize, $10 million. That pilot was remarkably composed considering what he had just <laughs> been through, Jeff. A gutsy guy, and he shook it off with a smile. Sure did. Jeff Zevelin reporting live. Thank you, Jeff. Well, there is new fallout tonight from San Diego's financial problems. Mayor Dick Murphy is calling for a two-year salary freeze. This move affects more than 12,000 city employees, including elected officials. Andrea Nakano is live downtown right now, having some reaction for us. Andrea? Well, Michael, many city employees didn't want to talk to us about this potential salary freeze. This issue has brought about a lot of anger, but it also brought about a lot of understanding on how bad the city is hurting financially. If I can freeze so that they can go on feeding their families, that's okay with me. With the city facing a pension debt of more than $1 billion, city employees learned about the possibility of a two-year salary freeze. People Mayor Dick Murphy question, says under his plan, it would put 60 to $80 million back into the pension fund. Without the salary freeze, the mayor fears the city may be forced to hand out a stack of pink slips. Something's got to give, and I think this is probably the, the fairest way to do it. Uh, the alternative, I'll point out, it could very well be layoffs of, of employees. We're having a problem right now. And if that's the best solution for it, I'm all for it. The salary freeze proposal, though, is not being warmly received by a lot of employees. San Diego, yes, everything's getting expensive. The house of the price, house of the price is going up, so it would be very hard. And unions also have mixed reactions. The president of the Police Officers Association says it's going to take a lot to convince him that this is the best solution to get San Diego out of debt. We're going to be asking questions, you know. Show us the dollars. How many dollars do you think this is going to save you? And in what way is it going to help you? Uh, what else are you doing? Are you going to put all this on the shoulders of the city employees as, uh, to solve the financial problems? We didn't create this problem. 
It is now going to be up to the city manager to enter into negotiations with the union. So it will be a while until we know if the salary freeze will actually go into place. Andrea Nakata reporting live. Thank you, Andrea. Well, more angry reaction tonight over strong comments made during a San Diego City School Board meeting. They were Jews who worked for the Nazis and they shepherded their own people onto the trains. And that is what we're being asked to do here. Board member Franz Zimmerman made those comments last night in response to a federal mandate to restructure underperforming schools. Superintendent Alan Burson was clearly upset by the comment. Talking about it, taking these schools and complying with federal law as tantamount to shepherding people to their Death death in gas chambers? My God. The Anti-Defamation League also issued a statement calling Zimmerman's remarks inexcusable and indefensible. Another strong earthquake rumbled the area southeast of Bakersfield. The magnitude 5.0 quake struck at about 3.54 this afternoon, about 17 miles northeast of Arvin. There were no immediate reports of injuries. Meanwhile, several aftershocks have been felt in central California following yesterday's 6.0 quake in Parkfield. Today, one aftershock measured 5.0 and another 4.5. Nearly a year after last October's devastating wildfires, the Board of Supervisors today gave us a progress report. The San Diego Fire Department says it's adding two new helicopters this spring. The California Department of Forestry will allow aircraft to fly later into the night as well. And the county will have stronger enforcement patrols to combat fraud and scams against fire victims. There will also be a new 211 fire hotline that will go into effect next June. You know, one of the homes that went up in flames in Scripps Ranch last October is now one of the first to rise from the ashes. Tonight, Marsha and Bob Linehan will spend their first night in their new home. They spent the last year rebuilding their dream home, which has spectacular views. It's amazing that 11 months ago, we have pictures of the house burning down, and here we are. And sometimes people come by and they see that the progress that we made, and so it gives them... They go, oh, I'm so glad to see that it does work, you know, because it does take a long time. Both Marsha and Bob also agree that this last year was a healing process <laughs> that helped bring them even closer to each other, and he carried her across the threshold as he promised he would do. Oh, that's so sweet. Sweet dreams tonight for sure. Well, the second straight year, La Jolla has been named the nation's most expensive market for relocation. Caldwell Banker found the average price of a 2,200 square foot home in La Jolla is $1.7 million. That's up 25% from last year. Beverly Hills came in second at $1.3 million. Santa Barbara, Palo Alto, and Greenwich, Connecticut rounded out the top five. Time right now, check your Wednesday night drive home. Jennifer Gray is in for Deb in Chopper 8. Jen. Good evening, Michael. Taking a look at the roadways, uh, it's looking so much better than it was about an hour ago, so that's some good news. Once you head out the door, uh, not too many problems outside. Let's take a look at the 8. It's moving right along. Uh, the, really, the only slow spots right now are the northbound 5 at Del Mar Heights Road, where there is a collision that has been reported. Also, southbound 15 at Claremont Mesa Boulevard. A crash there as well, backing things up behind the scene. A bit slow and go from the 163 getting into downtown. The Giants and the Padres are playing at Petco Park. 705 is the first pitch, so expect delays. And also northbound 15, just a tad slow, getting out of the Rancho Bernardo area towards the Escondido, uh, right past Via Rancho Parkway, and then it eases up. But overall, it's looking so much better this evening, so enjoy your Wednesday evening commute. Back to you in the studio. We'll do our best. Thanks a lot, Jen. It's no secret that Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal did not get along. Find out what Bryant told police about Shaq after his sexual encounter in Colorado. Next. Also, Martha Stewart today learns she will be serving her time at something they call Camp Cupcake. And the rescue of a baby dolphin washed ashore in Carlsbad is coming up. And like meteorologist Matt Vale, I'll have your microclimate forecast for the rest of the week and the first weekend of October. That's on the way. Stop by Westlow Chevrolet Hummer now through Thursday. Qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 72 months on all remaining 04s in stock only through Thursday. Westlow Chevrolet Hummer, Car Country, Carlsbad. Local 8 News is brought to you in part by Banner Mattress.
Have you ever seen what's inside your bed? Most mattress stores don't even know. At Banner, we know every spring, every layer. No mattress makes it to our showroom unless it's perfect. Because when you've been handcrafting mattresses for almost 80 years, you realize it's the little things that make the difference. Why pay full price? Banner can beat the other guys by around $200. Because we make them, you save. Banner Mattress, for the rest of your life. Right now, there are about 50 Indian casinos in California. They make $8 billion a year and pay exactly zero taxes. Soon, there could be 104 Indian casinos in California, making billions more, but still paying exactly zero taxes. It isn't fair. It isn't right. I didn't vote for it. Did you? Vote yes on 68. You pay your fair share. Why don't they? Every fashion statement ends with an exclamation point. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. You might need two chairs. You might need an entire room. Either way, it's a win-win situation during Pick a Pair, Pick a Room. Going on now at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. How lucky can one guy be? Allow me to slip into something more comfortable. I kissed her and she kissed me. Like the fella once said, ain't that a kick? Introducing the 2005 Nissan Altima with a new interior and now with $1,000 cash back or 2% APR financing. Only at your Nissan dealer. 53 tribes have casinos controlled by audits and state law. Suddenly, the state has new deals with just a few tribes. Proposition 70 would be better for California. The state gets more money with casinos paying the same rate as other Californians. No more, no less. 70 offers equal opportunity, ensuring all Indian casinos pay their fair share. Proposition 70 is fair for all Californians. From San Diego's number one source for local news, Michael Tuck, Kathleen Bade, meteorologist Matt Balo, and sports with Kyle Kraska. This is Local 8 News at 6.30. One month after criminal charges were dropped against Kobe Bryant, we have new information tonight about what he said to police after, his, uh, after he was questioned. The LA Times reports that Bryant told investigators that Shaquille O'Neal, his former teammate, had paid up to a million dollars to keep women quiet about similar situations. An Eagle County, Colorado detective wrote that comment in a report hours after Bryant's sexual encounter with his accuser. O'Neal was told about the comment last September. His agent says the allegation is not true and does not deserve a response. Martha Stewart today learned where she'll be serving her prison time in Alderson, West Virginia, not the Connecticut prison she requested. The prison, nicknamed Camp Cupcake, is a minimum security facility for women. Inmates there earn between 12 cents and 40 cents an hour for various jobs. Stewart will serve five months and must report to prison by October 8th. A baby dolphin washed ashore at Carlsbad State Beach this morning caused a lot of concern among people who came along and saw it. Boy, the pictures are amazing. Lifeguards quickly put a call out to SeaWorld to help the injured mammal. Our Dan Cohen was there for the rescue. Maybe he just went in the wrong direction and he got lost from his like, family. Some heart-wrenching moments for animal lovers. I don't like to see things die. This young dolphin beaches itself at Carlsbad State Beach. I, mean, I was crying on the, I was hysterical. Renee Gowdy was out for a morning walk when she saw the dolphin in trouble. When eyewitnesses first spotted the dolphin, it was clearly sick and disoriented, and it was getting attacked by birds. Thinking they could help, they pushed it back out in the water. And it did swim away. And so we were all jumping up and down, and then all of a sudden it turned around and came back up to shore. After the animal beached itself a second time, the Good Samaritans called lifeguards, and the lifeguards called SeaWorld. More than a dozen onlookers watched and waited. Breaks your heart, because you know that they're just struggling. When the animal rescuers showed up, it took a few short minutes to corral the animal. Loading it onto the truck, though, not so easy. 
Like a fish out of water, this dolphin turned out to be pretty feisty. You know, they're uh, densely muscled and, and incredibly strong. The rescue, a complete success, and no one's happier than the Good Samaritan. I want to find out how our baby, how our baby dolphin is. So I'm going to call maybe tomorrow and see. Dan Cohen, Local 8 News. Uh, we want to give you an update. Tonight, uh, the dolphin is at SeaWorld. The vets out there tell us that it is in guarded condition. It's eating, though, and it's swimming around in the rehabilitation pool. Good signs. Vets say they will continue to monitor the dolphin throughout the night. The world's fastest and tallest roller coaster will soon open in New Jersey. The ride at Six Flags Great Adventure Park is called King Da Ka. It'll accelerate to 128 miles per hour in three and a half seconds. The coaster climbs at a 90 degree angle, reaching a height of 456 feet. Riders are supposed to feel weightless. King Daka is set to open next spring. Riders may also feel sick. <laughs> Got you now, local eight microclimate weather, right where you live. <laughs> At roller coaster, they say you got to ride it twice. The second time around, you can actually pick up your stomach that you lost on the, the yeah. first time. Well, that thing, I think, like the space program, if you can ride it twice in two weeks, you ought to get some big cash Absolutely. dollars or something like that. We're going to see some uh, more conditions that are su suitable for September and October, I think, as we head toward the end of the week. But right now, we are getting some November-like weather out there. That means some sunshine, but also cool temperatures, cooler than they should be for this time of year. These are pictures from our local aid sky cam from earlier this evening. This microclimate time-lapse movie showing those clouds out there that have been moving off toward the east. They've been breaking up over the course of the late afternoon and early evening hours, but they will be filling in rapidly here once the sun does go down because we're looking for a strong marine layer once again that will bring us at least a threat for some spotty drizzle out there. Here's a live picture from our local aid sky cam. Right now the sun is down. We still have partly cloudy skies downtown. The temperature has cooled a couple of degrees since 5 o'clock. It's 69 right now. The wind is onshore at 7 miles an hour. The relative humidity 57% and the barometer currently falling it reached 29.90. Temperatures today made it into the upper 60s and low 70s both inland and at the coastline and right now temperatures have already cooled into the low 60s up at Ramona where it's 63, 61 in Campo where skies are clear along the coastline upper 60s there due in part to the 69 degree water that's helping to keep it from cooling off too quickly tonight. But we'll see more low clouds out there. We still have a good onshore flow right now. An area of low pressure that's centered over in eastern Nevada right now is still giving us that onshore flow. It's going to enhance that marine layer tonight. So you'll see those clouds once again develop overnight, give us the chance for some drizzle. The most of the moisture from this storm is too far to the north and east to really give us any kind of rain or threat for rain. But as it moves on to the east over the next couple of days, skies are gradually going to start clearing out. That should be happening in about another 24 hours or so. At the moment, well, we still have that marine layer at about 5,000 feet. That's where it was this morning. And with that, there is still the patchy drizzle that we're expecting overnight. It may not be as widespread. It'll be a little bit more patchy out there, but it will still be a possibility, at least through the morning hours. And then the gradual drying, that should be starting by about Thursday evening or possibly into Thursday night as well. Until that time, though, tomorrow should be a day a lot like today. And by midday, we'll still have some clouds out there with temperatures at the coastline, mostly in the upper 60s to low 70s, a little cooler than it should be, whereas inland, it'll be a lot cooler than normal. Upper 60s and lower 70s there as well. Look for some blue sky out there from time to time, but otherwise, a few clouds by midday. Up in the mountains and out of the marine layer, it'll be a little bit sunnier, a little bit brighter day. Temperatures there should make it into the mid-70s, and out in the desert, it'll be in the upper 80s, of course, with plenty of blue sky there. But over the next five days, the cool conditions will be sticking around, and the chance for drizzle through Friday morning, and then things will start to warm up. By Saturday and Sunday, we'll have temperatures back into the mid-70s at the beach, and inland, it'll be in the mid to upper 70s. So for this first weekend of October, it's looking like it'll be pretty nice out there. Yeah, good, good weekend for a ball game, hey? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Several ball games, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping they'll look like ball games. Coming up, you'll have a chance, in fact, to win two tickets for Sunday's Chargers game, and Kyle will tell you how. And the Padres playoff hopes uh, may be on life support, but hey, they still do have hope, and Kyle has more on that, too. My family came to this country to find the American dream. We work hard to make our customers happy. One day I got this letter from a law firm demanding $2,500. The letter didn't claim we broke the law. Just pay the money or go to court. I called a lawyer who said it would cost even more to fight. So we paid the money even though we'd done nothing wrong. Stop shakedown lawsuits against small family businesses. Yes on 64. Despite these obstacles, we've had a strong year with tobacco revenues surpassing expectations. 
Our volume was more than 560 billion cigarettes. Expanding overseas market share. A strong tobacco revenue. As we expand into foreign markets, we now control. In 1994, San Diego voters approved Gregory Canyon as North County's only landfill, requiring it to meet strict safety standards. Gregory Canyon's environmental study has been certified by the Department of Environmental Health. It is the most protective landfill in San Diego. Our region needs safe, affordable landfill capacity. Don't let one rich casino stop 10 years of planning. Prop B, good for the gambling casino paying for it, bad for the rest of us. Fast is fun. Fast is knowledge. Fast is possibility. You already know Cox High Speed Internet is fast. Now it's even faster. Over 30% faster. So you can do more on the Internet than ever before. Cox High Speed Internet just got faster. And fast is beautiful. Order today at CoxSanDiego.com. At Lexus, we're obsessed with making cars that handle and perform like no others. In this pursuit of perfection, we've also developed a camera which aids in negotiating the occasional obstacle to the rear. See your San Diego County Lexus dealer. Prop 68 would expand commercial gambling to non-tribal land, creating huge Las Vegas-sized casinos near 200 schools and traffic-congested freeways in city and suburban neighborhoods. It's supported by card club owners and out-of-state horse racing interests, but 68 is opposed by police, firefighters, educators, and organizations and leaders throughout California. And now Governor Schwarzenegger agrees. Vote no on 68. The more you know about Prop 68, the less you'll like it. Now, the latest scores and highlights. Local 8 Sports with Kyle Kraska. Well, Kyle, let's talk about the Padres. I went to the game last night, mm -hmm. and boy, it all seemed to just fold like a house of cards right in front of uh, our eyes. Ah, yes, but the, it's not over yet. Yes. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> last night's loss, while yes, a uh, major setback, not quite a fatal blow, thanks to the bumbling, stumbling Cubs. More on them in a moment. But tonight, yes, an absolute must win against the Giants. Our Jamie Sire is down there at Petco Park, and she's with the general manager of the Padres. Well, Kyle, as the old saying goes, it ain't over till it's over, and that's the mindset the Padres have right now going into their last games of the season. Joining me now is Kevin Towers, general manager for the Padres. And, Kevin, you've kind of been hiding out a little bit lately. You've been biting your nails a lot, especially games like last night. Well, they're tough. You know, this time of the year, you, you hope to be in these situations where they count. And, uh, we're playing a good San Francisco team. We're going to have to take these next two games to, you know, uh, still be in this and We go to Arizona, and uh, we got... Big game pitcher on the mound tonight, and David Wells, and hopefully he comes through like he's done uh, the past couple months. How much do you find yourself watching the scoreboard throughout the game? Well, I was inside in my office watching uh, the Astro uh, Cardinal game right now, and it's fun to be able to watch and know that the games mean something. I got to see the end of the Cub game, and you know, it gives us a little more hope. You know, so when those teams start uh, lose, and we got one of the teams in front of us right here, we're able to take care of business on the field this evening. Uh, it'll put us uh, one step closer to where we want to be is playing postseason baseball. All right, Jamie, Kevin, thank you. I mentioned the Cubs collapse. It continued today against the Reds. 1-1 game. Sammy looking for the grand slam. Instead, he is out at the Ivy. Still 1-1. Now 2-2 in the 12th. And there goes the game winner. Cincinnati's Austin Kearns with a two-run home run. The Cubs lose again. So the Giants now lead the Cubs by a half a game. And the Padres still three games back and a win tonight they could be two games back by the end of the night chargers running back ladanian tomlinson stopped by our local h studios today to say hello i talked to him about this quarterback conjury with uh, of course philip rivers now number two behind drew Brees. i asked lt his take on the qb situation drew Brees is our quarterback and until anything else happens and um we're gonna approach everything like drew Brees is our quarterback once we start to think about Philip, 
being second string and maybe moving into that starting lineup, you start to have division in the locker room. You don't want that. Do you think Drew Brees' confidence has been shaken at all by what's happened the last couple of I don't weeks? think so. I don't think so. He's going to adjust to it. He's going to find out what people are trying to do to him, man. He's going to bounce back. Now, as you know, this uh, game is not a sellout, but we've got a couple of tickets right here in our studios. If you'd like to call us right now, the eighth caller at that number, 858-570-1616, will win this pair of tickets to see the Chargers and the Titans this Sunday. And the rest of you, go out and buy some tickets because we want to see this game on TV. Of course, if it's not a sellout by Thursday at 1 o'clock, once again, blackout rule in effect. You won't be able to see it and on TV And LT anywhere. was telling you it makes a big yeah. difference. Well, to it have did the last week against the Broncos last week. That Denver crowd was loud in the fourth quarter. It is disruptive. That's what we need here in San Diego is a home crowd for the Chargers. All right. We know you'll be out front. We <laughs> need to win is what we need. <laughs> Maybe we'll get it Sunday. It's the latest thrill in extreme water sports. The best kite boarders in the world compete for the title of King and Queen of the Air next. Remember which full size truck has the best in class interior space, best in class power, and the best in class towing capacity. Remember the Titan. And don't forget $1,500 cash back or 2% financing at your Nissan dealer now. The full size Nissan Titan. Unforgettable. How do you award your appetite? If you're like many of your friends, neighbors, or business associates, you meet at Trophies. Award your appetite at Trophies. Where every fashion statement ends with an exclamation point. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. You might need two chairs. You might need an entire room. Either way, it's a win-win situation during Pick a Pair, Pick a Room. Going on now at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Here's Johnny. Next entertainment tonight, Johnny on Leno leaving late night. Plus, which friend is moving to CSI? And why is Leah Remini getting frisky with E.T.? Then, on The Insider, inside the late night shakeups, who's gunning for Conan's job? Inside celebrity identity theft and the man who stole Will Smith's ID. And NASCAR's Dale Earnhardt Jr. inside his love life. Tonight at 7 on Local 8. Closed captioning on Local 8 News is brought to you by Sleep Train Mattress Centers. Your ticket to a better night's sleep. Tonight on Local 8 News at 11, a new warning from scientists about Mount St. Helens. Researchers are telling us the volcano could blow at any time. And recent earthquakes here in California are making the situation even worse. We'll explain tonight at 11. Youth rules in the latest extreme water sport. Red Bull held its sixth annual kiteboarding championship in Maui this week, and 17-year-old Tuturai Monterone of Bora Bora and Susie Mai of the Dominican Republic were crowned king and queen of the air. Monterone is the youngest champion ever. He flipped 40 feet in the air to impress the judges. Mai is the first to claim the title two years in a row. Kiteboarders from 20 countries were judged on how long they could stay in the air. It's actually kind of a beautiful sport oh, to watch, really but it looks really dangerous really at the wild. same time. How you could land on the water and be and like cement. Be dragged along there. <laughs> this <laughs> is true. That's our news. We thank you very much for joining us tonight. We hope you have a great night. We'll see you later on for Local 8 News at 11. Take care. Good night. I can just Jay Leno's secret.